Schnellenberger, legendary Louisville football coach, dies at age 87. Howard Schnellenberger was a visionary. He saw possibilities where others could only see problems. His life was a testament to dreams and audacity, to beliefs so brazen as to invite skepticism and inspire laughter. With or without his trademark pipe, Schnellenberger was famous for blowing smoke. He declared Louisville to be on a collision course with a national championship not long after former U of L athletic director Bill Olson feared we were on a collision course to dropping football. The coach, who died Saturday, March 27 at age 87, was to Louisville what Professor Harold Hill was to River City, the huckster who delivered hope. He brought some sort of big time feel to it, like the music man, was Terry Miners said. There was a definite mood swing. We didn't quite get a swagger, but I think everybody held their heads higher after being a laughingstock. U of L football was at low ebb when Schnellenberger returned to his hometown to coach the Cardinals in 1985. Stuck playing before sparse crowds in a decrepit minor league baseball stadium, mired in a streak that would ultimately extend to nine straight losing seasons, the outlook was so grim former Board of Trustees Chairman A. Wallace Skip Grafton had recommended the board take a hard look at football to see if it's worth it. But just as he had done at the University of Miami, Schnellenberger attracted attention with bold pronouncements and then backed them up with unprecedented results that included U of L's first 10 win season its first New Year's Day bowl game and blowout victories over brand names including Alabama and Texas. I think without question here has erected the program, said former Cardinals quarterback Jeff Brom, now the head coach at Purdue. He provided hope, optimism at a time where there was talk of possibly shutting things down. He not only kept it going, but took it to a point when he dropped it off, it was at its highest level. Had he remained at Miami, Keho says Schnellenberger might have won as many as 10 national championships. If anybody would have done it, it would have been him, Caho said. He was something else, man. Instead, Schnellenberger left for a job that never materialized, agreeing to run a USFL franchise expected to relocate from Washington to Miami. The deal collapsed after the USFL announced a shift to a fall schedule and Schnellenberger chose not to follow new ownership to Orlando. This left him available as Louisville looked for a coach who could pump life into its flatlining football program. Olson, formerly an assistant basketball coach on Denny Crum's strength, put on a full-court press to persuade Schnellenberger to take on the challenge of his hometown team, rallying friends and businessmen throughout the community, erecting billboards, and enlisting former Kentucky Governor John Y. Brown to help close the deal. We were at a crossroads, Olson said. When we came to that crossroads, if we didn't make a major move, we'd be like many mid-majors. Howard put us on a collision course to making football successful and profitable. Despite Schnellenberg.